At this moment, Michael is engaged in a transaction with the Mafia. He wants to exchange a crate of liquid explosives for a ticket to Mexico. The Mafia boss discovers a problem. The liquid explosives should be packaged in glass. But these are in plastic containers. He orders his men to inspect the goods. And they quickly discover Michael's scheme. The liquid he brought is actually sugar water. He raises his gun at Michael and threatens to make him pay. Just then, Sucre bursts into the room and a firefight ensues between him and the Mafia. Sucre defeats the Mafia members and Michael ties them up to chairs. Due to excessive blood loss, the Mafia boss's brother pleads with Michael to spare him. Sucre demands that he reveal the time and location of the plane's landing. In order to save himself from bleeding to death, he reveals the landing location of the plane. Sucre urges Michael to leave quickly and promises to release the Mafia members once he is safe. However, kind-hearted Michael keeps his promise and frees them from their restraints. As the Mafia boss is about to leave, he reveals the real address. It turns out the earlier one was fake. At this moment, Lincoln arrives to meet up with Michael, accompanied by their father. Their father has obtained evidence and made significant breakthroughs that can help Lincoln clear his name. There is a cassette tape that contains recordings of conversations implicating the female president in framing Lincoln. However, this cassette falls into the hands of Sarah's father. Within 24 hours, Sarah's father mysteriously dies, but the cassette tape has been hidden somewhere. So, as long as they find Sarah, they will find a breakthrough. However, Sarah is in a dangerous situation. After Sarah and Michael separate, she is immediately captured by Agent Kellerman and taken to a hotel, where she is tied to a chair. Kellerman is no longer concerned about Michael's whereabouts, but instead demands Sarah hand over the cassette tape. He asks her three times in a row, but Sarah insists she doesn't know where it is. Kellerman thoroughly searches her bag but fails to find what he is looking for. Sarah notices a key that has fallen out and seems to have an idea. Losing patience, Kellerman forces Sarah into the bathtub and tries to force her to reveal the whereabouts of the tape. In a fit of anger, Kellerman prepares to continue torturing her. He brings an iron and puts on insulated gloves, then pushes Sarah back into the tub and throws the iron in. The electric shock and the fear of drowning torment Sarah, but she remains silent. Kellerman goes outside to prepare a body bag and a saw, intending to dismember Sarah. Inside the bathtub, Sarah attempts to use her mouth to unscrew the drain plug. When Kellerman returns to the bathroom, Sarah suddenly lunges at him from behind and presses the iron against his chest. Sarah takes the keys from the table, opens the window, and jumps out. By the time Kellerman reaches the window, all he sees is shattered glass and blood stains on the car beneath. Injured, Sarah takes refuge in a restroom and uses matches to sterilize a needle. She takes a deep breath and prepares to stitch up her wound, but the intense pain makes her hands tremble. Meanwhile, Michael and his companions are rushing towards the plane when they hear footsteps in the distance. They turn around and realize it's Mahoney, who mercilessly fires several shots at them. Their father instructs the others to go ahead and drive, while he stays behind to hold off Mahoney. When their father returns to the car, everyone smiles with joy, except their father's expression appears abnormal. Michael realizes that their father has been shot and soon dies in his arms. The two brothers arrive at a riverbank and bury their father's body. Mahoney goes to the hospital where he finds the mafia boss with whom Michael had made the deal. He states that as long as he provides accurate information leading to Michael's capture, the government will not pursue charges against the mafia boss. And the mob boss seemed unsatisfied, demanding that Mahoney prepare a green card for him and provide written proof. Upon hearing this, Mahoney became unhappy in an instant and headed straight for the medical machine, unplugging it. Michael and his companions waited for the plane to escape from the United States, and Sucre excitedly urged them to leave as soon as possible. Lincoln and Michael expressed their intention to stay in the United States because they wanted to uncover the truth. Their father had just been killed by Mahoney, and they couldn't simply walk away. Sucre stopped trying to persuade them and bid them farewell before boarding the plane alone. 
As Michael and Lincoln drove away, a loud roar echoed behind them. They got out of the car and saw a fighter jet zooming across the sky. It seemed that Sucre was in grave danger. Driving on the border road, Michael's phone finally had a signal. Taking the risk of being tracked by the FBI, Michael dialed Sarah's number. Just then, Mahoney suddenly veered from the side and rammed into Michael's car. The tremendous impact created dazzling sparks, and Michael struggled to crawl out of the wreckage. Michael prepared to reach for his phone, but Mahoney had already aimed his gun at them. At that moment, Sarah's voice came from the phone on the ground. The loud crash attracted patrolling police officers who shouted through loudspeakers for them to drop their weapons. After some thought, Mahoney ultimately decided not to kill Michael and Lincoln. Due to the urgency of the situation, all three of them were taken back to the police station for questioning. In the airspace above the border, the plane Sucre was on came under pursuit by the U.S. military. The pilot decided to abandon the plane and parachute to safety, tossing a parachute to Sucre. Reluctantly, Sucre accepted the situation and, after taking a swig of courage from a drink, made a praying gesture and jumped. News of Michael and Lincoln's arrest spread in the media. Teabag raised his glass at a bar, greeting his friends on the television. Now, only four escapees are still on the run. Mahoney received a call from Bill, who demanded that he kill Michael and Lincoln, using Mahoney's wife and child as leverage. Sending Michael and Lincoln back to prison could potentially complicate matters. Bill had greater power and was even more ruthless. Kellerman's failed actions greatly displeased Bill. Kellerman wanted to redeem himself by participating in the assassination of Michael. Michael and Lincoln were being escorted into the police car, about to be taken back to Fox River State Penitentiary. On the other side, Brad received news of Geary's death and pretended to show grief. Unfortunately, because he left a voicemail for Geary, it was considered as incriminating evidence. The judge and lawyers believed that Brad had killed Geary. Brad couldn't let the jurors know about the secret of the $5 million treasure. As a consequence of his own actions, Brad was ultimately sent back to prison and sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment. Once a formidable figure, Brad returned to prison as a convict. Mahoney and Kellerman planned to leave an opportunity for Michael to escape during the transport. They intended to kill Michael and Lincoln when they attempted to flee so no evidence would be left behind. As the vehicle carrying the escaped convicts passed through a tunnel, a coincidental accident occurred ahead, blocking the way. At this moment, the guards in the vehicle were called away to assist with the scene. Coincidentally, the key to the handcuffs was left on the seat. Michael and Lincoln saw the key and noticed the emergency exit on their right. They prepared to escape once again. All of this was a trap designed by Mahone and Kellerman had already set up a sniper rifle to kill them. If Lincoln and Michael chose to escape, they would surely meet their demise. Michael and Lincoln also discovered the clues and, after much hesitation, decided to take a chance. They picked up the keys, opened the handcuffs, and quickly crawled into the escape tunnel. The police discovered Michael and Lincoln fleeing and immediately went after them. But it was too late. Mahoney instructed Kellerman to intercept from the front while he flanked from behind. Michael and Lincoln ran ahead while Mahoney calmly followed behind without rushing to shoot. His mission was to kill Michael and Lincoln first, and then kill Kellerman. He called Kellerman and told him the whereabouts of Lincoln and Michael. The two blocked the path of Michael and Lincoln from the front and back. Just as everything was about to end, Kellerman turned his gun and shot Mahoney in the chest. Mahoney trembled and fell to the ground, shocking Michael and Lincoln. Because Kellerman was forced into a corner, he decided to join forces with Michael and Lincoln to fight against the evil company. At first, Michael and Lincoln were skeptical, but in the end, they escaped together with Kellerman. Upon learning that the escaped convicts were on the run again, the police blocked the tunnel exit with a large number of police cars and deployed helicopters. Michael and Lincoln followed behind Kellerman and eventually managed to escape in a car. The police found Mahoney, who had been shot and listened to his phone call. Bill learned that Mahoney had been shot and realized that Michael and Lincoln had escaped again. Using his FBI identity, Kellerman evaded the investigation checkpoints 
and the three of them finally escaped unscathed. Lincoln found Kellerman familiar and remembered that he had tried to kill him before. Filled with anger, Lincoln punched Kellerman, causing the vehicle to lose control and slide to the side of the road. He grabbed Kellerman's gun, intending to kill him, but Kellerman quickly surrendered with his hands up. Kellerman claimed that he was no longer a threat and that someone behind the scenes had ruined their lives. He said he could help clear Lincoln's name because he was the one who framed him. He knew too many secrets and had become a thorn in the side of the president. Prisoners were lining up for food in the prison, each with a piece of cake for dessert. Brad wrapped the dessert in a napkin and approached a strong African-American man handing the dessert to him. The man enjoyed the dessert and praised its deliciousness. Brad prepared to return to his seat, but was stopped by the strong man. The man stood up and told Brad that he needed more dessert. The once powerful prison captain was now being bullied by a group of inmates. Brad couldn't take it anymore and pulled out a weapon from his waist, viciously attacking the man. Back in his cell, Brad was bragging to his cellmate when a prison guard approached. The guard informed Brad that the man he had attacked earlier planned to retaliate tonight. Brad hoped his former colleagues could help him. However, the night shift guards were extremely unhappy with him and saw this as an opportunity for revenge. After delivering the message, the guard left calmly. Mahoney woke up in the hospital and received a call from Bill. He told Bill that Kellerman shot him and that Kellerman had teamed up with Lincoln and Michael. They arrived at the FBI's dedicated airport and Kellerman wanted to use his FBI identity to board a plane. As long as they could find the president's brother and prove to the media that he was alive, Lincoln could be declared innocent. With no other choice, the two brothers had to follow Kellerman. Bill was about to transfer the witness, which happened to block Kellerman at the door. The guards were no match for Kellerman, and he quickly took care of them. The three of them arrived at a motel, and Michael picked up the phone on the table to notify the reporters to come, as long as everyone knew that the president's brother was alive. Lincoln would be acquitted of the murder charges. By exposing the president's crimes, they would all be set free. The president's brother grabbed the gun from Lincoln's pocket and demanded that they spare him. If he appeared in front of the media, the evil company and the president would not hesitate to kill him. Michael said too many people had suffered because of this. And as long as the president's brother spoke the truth in front of the camera, everything would end. However, the president's brother uttered sorry and shot himself. They lost their witness and embarked on the road of fugitives once again.